Well, uh, so we just talked about someone who won a medal that she didn't deserve mm -hmm. with no shame, it sounds like. Take, took that to her death. No shame at all. This guy's quite the opposite. This is a South Korean boxer who oh. competed in the 1988 Olympics. And uh, he is ashamed of his gold medal. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Can't say I can tell anyone... Uh, think of anyone else who would, would do be that yeah, yeah exactly uh but you're gonna see why in a second uh have you ever heard of roy jones jr <laughs> yes i'm not a huge boxing fan but uh honestly i'm probably a bigger fan of his music than this <laughs> we're definitely gonna put a clip in right yeah. there you will not win because i will not You can't uh, be touched <laughs> yeah it. so brief rap career but uh he's a very prominent boxer like probably the most dominant boxer in the 90s mm -hmm. maybe aside from mike tyson uh this guy won over his whole career he won 66 matches and only lost seven 47 of them were knockouts so he's representing the united states he's 19 years old he hasn't really achieved his legendary status right yet but he has got skills and uh, then we have our South Korean boxer, whose name is Park Si-hoon. Okay. And uh, Park is light. He's agile. This is a lightweight division, by the way. So he's light. He's agile. He can't really throw uh, punches as hard as some other people, but he is very capable. Uh, they end up in the gold medal match together. And, uh, well, Roy Jones ends up tagging him with punches 86 times during this contest. No knockout. Uh, but, How many rounds did it go? Uh, you know what? I didn't write that one down. But suffice to say, A6 punches way, takes yeah. a few rounds. If it's going like 10 rounds, 12 rounds. Park is Haney in there, but he only throws 32 punches and connects <laughs> the whole time. And like I said, this guy does not have a heavy hand. So he's like barely hanging in there in terms of... Exactly. Compared um, to the judges. So... Uh, what happens is uh, they go to the judges, right? Because there's no knockout. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's five judges all from different countries. You got like Morocco, Italy, America, um, everywhere but South Korea. Mm -hmm. And the judges uh, rule in favor of Park Si Hun, who had a one third of the punches thrown that Tyson did. They weren't very heavy. Roy Jones, you mean? Roy Jones, yeah, yeah, sorry, Roy Jones Jr. By the way, Roy Jones Jr., I just recently heard, is set up a fight with Mike Tyson. These guys are two really old guys. But, uh, yeah, they've set that up recently. So. Well, Roy Jones was actually recently on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he was kind of, I think he brought this up, and, like, he basically, the only thing I remember about it, really, was that, like, he was motivated and, like, beyond the point of pissed, and, like, just right back in the gym after that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I, I would be too, because if Park si Hun won that, I'd want to tear someone's head off, probably. <laughs> like they, That was a gold stolen from him. An Italian commentator announcer uh, actually went up to the judges' table and started berating them so aggressively that he had to be thrown out uh, after the ruling was finished. An Italian uh Individual. announcer so announcer. maybe think he's impartial at this point but yeah american coach was also upset but you know american coach You're he's kinda, gonna go that's for gonna his make guy. sense yeah um another impartial well sort of impartial person uh apparently as uh i think his name's alfo or aldo leone uh the referee as he raises park's hand he looks over to roy jones and he's like i can't believe you were they are doing this to you <laughs> that's a quote from him uh, Park afterward admitted to Roy Jones because Roy Jones goes to him and asks him, "Yeah, uh, do you think you won that fight?" And he said, "No." And then I guess Roy Jones thought that was cool. He was like, "As long as you know, yeah, and, you know, no ill will toward him." Uh, but the crazy thing is, how did the judges rule this? Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's in South Korea, but like none of the judges would be really South Korean. Exactly. Maybe right? one, but even that, you said none. So yeah. Um, and like the outrage was so, so prominent that in 1997, uh, so like a full 11 years later, mm -hmm. the Olympic Committee, the IOC had to actually uh, conduct an investigation, which um, most people said was, I think one of the quotes was a dog and pony show. So basically it was a sham. It wasn't, it didn't decide anything. It didn't yeah, find anything. It's like, we're looking into it. <laughs> right. Yeah. But some journalists looked into it and they, uh, they asked the judges about the ruling. One judge said, uh, 
that uh, this one guy from Morocco, he said, uh, well, I voted for the South Korean boxer because I assumed that no one else would vote for him. And I didn't want to embarrass the host country. I was expecting the score to be four to one. I have no idea why the other ju- judges voted in his favor. Keep in mind, by the way, of the judges, three of them voted for Park. Two of them voted for Jones. So it was just a big pity party for the South Koreans at the 1988 Olympics. <laughs> I mean, like, and then, uh, but, okay, then the sh- uh, journalism gets involved. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the Stasi is uh, still um, in East, Eastern Berlin. Yeah. The Stasi, you know, like the Soviet Union. Yeah, Stasi. yeah. yeah. Uh, like the secret police. Mm-hmm. Uh, they find records that uh, that say that uh, in their logs, uh, the South Koreans were witness bribing the other two judges uh, hmm. with uh, what they call golden nuggets. Okay. So I guess little pieces of gold. So one guy felt bad. The other two were paid off. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the one guy. Says yeah, he felt bad. Says he felt bad. Maybe you just paid I off wouldn't too. Be a, I wouldn't be super surprised yeah. if he just was one not caught and he had a good excuse. Yeah. Um. Anyway, this goes down as one of the easily the most recognizable fixed games in the Olympics. Upset, yeah, holy. Yeah. I mean, not even an upset. It didn't even really count. There's no legitimacy to it, so. Yeah, uh, but yeah Park Si-hoon, after admitting to Roy Jones, yeah, you should have won that. Uh, he all but retires from boxing. He goes to work at a school, spends many <laughs> years, and then decades later, uh, the South Korean uh, Olympic Committee comes to him, and he becomes a coach. He's convinced to become a coach, and uh, he says that his dream is to mold a south korean boxer that can actually earn a gold so pretty good guy so he's made like a post uh olympic career of like admitting that it wasn't legit yeah i I think he i think he actually felt a little bit cheated too i think he would have preferred the silver medal Mm -hmm. um you'd feel better he'd probably sleep better (laughs) right yeah uh but uh it was it was the government so what are you gonna do um but he does seem like a good guy, though, right, Park Si Hoon? Yeah, I mean, like you don't really know. Like maybe he's playing victim out of it. I mean, he got a gold medal, so you can't play victim that hard. But like you got to assume that like if there's that much bribery going on, that like maybe he had something to do with it. Yeah, I, I can just see like in the Olympics and with all these international affairs going on, mm-hmm. is it so crazy to think that the South Koreans did not inform their athlete that they were bribing the judges? No, like definitely that's not. That's just going to throw him off. He's Why would you even involve him at that point, yeah. right? I mean, obviously, we know already that there's crazier things that happen in sports in terms of somebody just knowing about being paid off. Right. Um, yeah, a, a lot of actually crazy things happened in that 1988 Olympics in uh, South Korea. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look it up, like the North Koreans had a huge conflict with the South Koreans on where it was. Yeah. Uh, I'll save that story for another day, though, I think. Well, maybe you could throw a link in the in the description or something to see if someone's interested in doing a little further reading on Park Si-hoon, see if he's actually a good guy or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm, my mind is set, you know, he, uh, he recognized what happened and he fully admitted to it. And, uh, I mean, he can't like, what, what is he going to do? Give the gold medal to Roy Jones? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't even think Roy Jones would, would take, take that at that point. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't really know that much about his boxing career, but in terms of, um, what I do know, I know like he's, probably the one guy who's like gone through the most weight classes mm-hmm. like he's won at the most levels yeah because you go like lightweight welterweight like he's just gaining weight yeah like, exactly so i think like his diversity is like 70 pounds or 60 pounds between yeah. divisions that's not common for boxers either apparently they usually stay within their own division and yeah they just try and beat everybody else in yeah division unless to pulp. <laughs> you're talking about like a 19 year old that goes like you know at 25 get, gains a bunch of weight like mm-hmm. muscle mass uh, maybe but yeah, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it for my story.